I'm excited for what God is going to speak to us today. Amen. Uh, I had a powerful encounter with God and what I'm going to speak to you is straight from the heart of God and I believe that it's going to bring you to a place of great transformation and great elevation. So Amen. I want you to let somebody know that will let somebody know that will let somebody know that will let somebody know that we are alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's going to be too much and I want you to be excited. You see, God loves an excited people. Amen. And whenever you are excited, it's easier for your spirit to be touched. Amen. Let me give you an example. Why do you think that people who want to uh, con men or con women or people who want to uh, swindle you, how do they swindle you to put your guards down? They excite you. Yeah. When you are excited, your defenses go down. Mm -hmm. The same principle is spiritually. Mm -hmm. When you are excited, it's easy for God to reach you mm -hmm. because logic yeah. goes out of the way. Amen. Wow. Does that make sense? Yep. I feel like people online, maybe are more awake. I don't know if people... Yeah. I, I think people in here are just... Uh, so I want you to be excited. Whenever you're in the presence of God, always be happy. Amen. Always rejoice. That's why David said, I was glad when I was told, let us go into the house of God. So today I want to speak about a very powerful uh, uh, subject that God revealed to me. And, um, and I know it will transform you because when you hear it, you will understand the mind of God. And you will see why you have such a hard time functioning in faith, not only functioning in faith, mm -hmm. but releasing the power of God that truly changes things. You see, the evidence of walking with God is not simply I am going to heaven. Yeah. Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. There must be evidence that God is with you. Yeah. Yeah. There is evidence that when you have eaten, there is evidence. It shows with your health. There is also evidence if you're hungry, yeah. it shows. If you're malnutritioned, it shows. Yes. If, you, if, you, if you showered, we will know. You know, if you don't shower, we will also know. So there is evidence for every kind of situation yes. and every kind of thing that is going on with us. Yeah. So it should be the same way when you are walking with God. Yeah. Somebody said that it should be the same way. It should be the same way. There must always be evidence. Yeah. You see, let us reject a, 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 a spirituality mm -hmm. yes. Christianity that does not result to anything mm -hmm. yes. that results in a lot of talking mm -hmm. a lot of religiousness but yes. no evidence mm -hmm. you see Jesus came and said something the Lord Jesus said something very interesting he looked at the children of Israel and said for all the signs that I showed you mm -hmm. My father has done all these things through you, through me, to prove to you something. Notice there is evidence that proved that Jesus was the Messiah, not simply because he died. Yeah. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. Yeah. There are things he did to show you that he was not a normal human being. He was a human being that walked with God. Mm. Yes. Amen. He goes into the wedding, turns water into wine when it's not his time. Yes. Mm. Amen. Wow. He goes, feeds 5,000 people, uh -huh. heals so many people, uh, opens so many blind people's eyes, resurrects a few people from the, actually many people from the dead. He does crazy stuff. Some is not even, actually majority of it is not even recorded. But the reason why he did them is so that if he tells you I'm the son of God, you know who he is. So you cannot say I'm a daughter of God. There is no evidence. You can't say, oh, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Where's the evidence? Yeah. We've seen people in the scriptures, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. There were things that proved Amen. Yeah. who they were. Yeah. What is proving who you are? Mm. Mm. So there should always be something that proves. Yes. Yes. I wish more people would share this. We haven't started. Can you refresh the YouTube, please, for me? Yeah. Facebook, I need you to share. YouTube, I need you to share. This is going to be uh, too much. I need more thumbs up, as many thumbs up as possible, especially on YouTube so that we can get rolling. Now, I want us to go to the book of Exodus. Amen. Exodus. This one is going to be very sweet. <laughs> Who is going to read today? Can you give her the mic since you are doing this? G give her the mic. This is going to be sweet. Exodus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
We're going to read Exodus chapter 20 from verse, do you have a mic also? Where's the other mic? Oh, 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 you are here, I forgot, okay. All right, all right, Heather, you start with this and then I'll give you a scripture to read, okay? Okay. Are you sure you're ready? Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Uncle Jello. <laughs> where's, where's Uncle Jill's? Okay, okay, perfect. Are you ready? Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. I want you to pay attention because this message will require you to really be attentive. Amen. And I pray that the spirit of revelation will come upon you. Amen. I really do. Because without the spirit of revelation, what I'm about to tell you will either confuse you, destroy you, or build you up. You know, there are truths that if God reveals to you, if you are not reformed by the spirit of God, if your mind is not renewed, it can actually mess your spirituality. I'm telling you the truth. That's why there's a lot of things, even prophetic secrets, I have never shared. There are things I've shared. There are things I don't even know if I will ever share wow. before God. I have to love you so much to tell you. But I know that if I stood publicly and spoke, ah, I will be stoned. Yeah. Yet it's everything in your scriptures. Yeah. But there are certain heavenly truths that you can't. Mm. So what we do is we build people up so that either you come into that truth naturally yeah. or I build you up enough that when I tell you, it's like, oh, wow, that's, oh. Wow, that's, that's, you, you get what a, a light bulb just lights up. Yeah. When Jesus looks at the people, he said, uh, they said, Lord, we have been looking for you. They were looking for him because he fed them. He said, no, you guys want me because you just want bread. They said, no, Lord, we, they are calling him even Lord. No, master, we are, we are looking for you. He said, listen, you want bread, but what I want to give you is my flesh and blood. Yeah. To eat, I want you to eat my flesh and drink my blood so that you may have life. Yeah. They started saying, this man is demon-possessed. Yeah. So everything he was telling them, right. Jesus knew they are not ready to digest the truth he was about to tell them. Yeah. Mm. You want solutions, but you don't want eternal life. Mm. Eternal life and this solution you're looking for, you will only get it if you become part of me. And the only way you become part of me is eating my flesh and drinking my blood. Mm -hmm. They said they started leaving. They started leaving yeah. Jesus. <laughs> then Jesus looked at the 12. He said, are you also going to leave me? They said, Lord, where are we going to go? Who else has the word of life? Right. Mm -hmm. Now, their difference is that they were close to Jesus and Jesus taught the mysteries that he didn't teach other people. Yeah. Yeah. They asked the Lord Jesus, Lord, why do you teach the people in parable and you explain them to us? Jesus said, because it is not given to them to know, but it's been given to you mm -hmm. to know. So there are certain things because they immediately thought of the occultic people who do blood and, and flesh, you know, uh, sacrifices. So they knew Jesus talking like this, it is demonic. But yet it wasn't. Today in your church you sit there and you do Holy Communion every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But because you don't really think on what you're doing, you don't understand how spiritual it is. Mm. Jesus is not saying it is grape juice, he's saying it is my blood you're drinking. Yeah. The bread you're eating, no, no, you're not eating, you're eating my flesh. But you, you know, so many believers, they just eat it casually. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's just symbolic. No, it's not symbolic. Wow. You think wow. it's symbolic because you're not spiritual. Wow. <laughs> so there are truths that are digestible and there are truths that you need to mature to digest. Right. So the spirit of revelation is so necessary. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to go to Exodus chapter 20 from verse 3 to 4. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Please pay attention. I want you, if there is a full stop at the end, please say full stop. Okay. I want to make sure people are clear on what we are reading. If you're ready online, just say we are ready and I want to see flames of fire to know that you're ready and then we'll begin. I need to see flames of fire and then I know that we are ready to go. I just want to see flames of fire and then we'll know we are ready to begin. Okay, YouTube is ready. Okay, let's see if Facebook is ready. I know there's a slight delay on Facebook. Kalaba Sataya. Lord, we give you praise. Master Jesus, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your presence. Okay, people are ready on Facebook. All right. All right, go ahead. Exodus 20, verse 3. Uh-huh. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Read it again. 
Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Uh huh. And then what happens? Full stop. Full stop. Now the problem is people join verse 3 to 4. Mm. Not really understanding. If I put a full stop, it means that sentence is done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For us English speakers. Right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If I say... Uh, this, this, that, I put a full stop. It means when I start over, I'm going into other things. Yes, yes. That part is done. Amen. Amen. Read it again. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God is saying you will not have another God apart from me. Amen. Full stop. Full. Go to verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images, keep going. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above uh -huh. or that is in the earth beneath uh -huh. or that is in the water under the earth. One more time, read verse 4 again. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. You will not make for yourself any graven image. Any image, you will not make it for yourself. Mm -hmm. What does he mean, graven image? It doesn't simply mean uh, a carved out image. You will not create anything. Mm -hmm. You will not create anything. Read it again. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. You will not make for yourself any kind of image. And the word image there is Purcell. Mm -hmm. You will not make for yourself any image, keep reading. Or any likeness. Or any likeness. Of anything. Of anything. That is in heaven above. That is in heaven above. Or that is in the earth beneath. That is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the water under the earth. No, or anything that is in water under the earth. So there are three locations. God is telling you, you will not create any graven images for yourself. Heaven above. We'll discover which heaven is this. The earth beneath. What does he mean the earth beneath? He's not talking about the earth only. He's talking about what is under the earth and what is also under the water. Wow. Come on. So somebody who reads this casually is not understanding what God is saying, but you'll understand in a second. Yeah. I want you to read verse 4 again and then go to verse 5. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exodus 20 verse 4. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image uh -huh. or any likeness of anything mm -hmm. that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Uh huh. Why? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. You will not bow down yourself to them. Nor serve them. Nor serve them. For I, the Lord, for I, the Lord, thy God, your God, am a jealous God. I am a jealous God. Stop right there. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray for everyone that is in this room, those who are watching live. I pray that, Lord, by your sovereign mercy, mm -hmm. my Father and my God, I pray that in the name of your Son, Jesus, bathe us in the spirit of revelation. May we be unlocked to comprehend the heavenly mysteries that, Lord, we may live a thriving and powerful life to the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, glorify yourself through us this evening and show yourself unto us in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to be ready now because <laughs> this one is about to be fire. And I'm going to say some things that are going to mess you up, but I want you to bear with me. There is nothing you have ever done on earth without an image. You dress because you saw somebody else dressed. When you go to the store, you want to buy shoes, you want to buy clothes. There is an image of a woman or a man putting on clothes so that you can see yourself. So from the start of your life, you have been imitating an image. Period. Yes. Amen. But I want to tell you something that is going to be shocking. And if you bear with me, you will understand. Amen. You will understand why God hates for you to create for yourself any image. Wow. Wow. 
I'll start by saying this. God is not against images. Hmm. Everything you've been told about idols is a lie. Hmm. And I'll prove it to you in scripture. Wow. And I will tell you why it is a lie. And why you need to listen to this message. Because it will not only free you. It will bring you closer to God. Wow. Amen. Amen. You will function with God better. Wow. Amen. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God is saying you will not make for yourself any image. You will not bow down to it. You will not look up to it. You will not make for yourself any image. But I want to show you something. Go to the book of Numbers. And then I will tell you now what, real, what a real idol is. Amen. And, you, and it will make you understand what uh, a, a real idol is. I want you to go to actually Exodus 37, verse 1 to 7. Verse 1 to, to 7. Yes. Exodus, yeah, her. Exodus 37, verse 1 to 7. Yeah, you, you're ready. I think you're good to go. Okay. Uh huh. Exodus 37, mm -hmm. verse 1 to 7. Uh huh. And Bella Leo mm -hmm. made the ark of Shittim mm -hmm. wood. Mm -hmm. Two cubits and a half was mm -hmm. the length of it, mm -hmm. and a cubit and a half mm -hmm. the breadth of it, mm -hmm. and a cubit and a half the height of it. Uh huh. Verse 2. Mm hmm. And he overlaid it with mm. pure gold within and without. Okay, stop right there. We don't even need to go farther. God is telling the children of Israel, actually go to uh, Exodus twenty-five twenty-two. Go to twenty-five twenty-two. This will speak what I'm trying to say. Amen. Twenty-five twenty-two. Please, children of God, be patient. <laughs> Exodus twenty-five twenty-two. Are you there? Uh -huh. Yes. What does it say? Exodus 25, 22. Uh -huh. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, uh -huh. from between the two cher cherubims, mm -hmm. which are upon the ark of the testimony mm -hmm. of all things, which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Stop right there. When God had spoken to the children of Israel, he spoke to Moses, he spoke to the mm -hmm. priests. I want you to make an ark. On the ark, you have two cherubims. God is giving them images mm. to put on an ark. Yes. That tells you God is not against anything like that. Wow. Okay. Uh -uh. Are you listening okay. to me? Yes. God is telling him, I want you to make an ark. It's going to be like this. You will lay it with gold like this. You do this and you put two angels on top of the ark. And God is not saying, I will speak to you through my spirit. Into you, the way I've been talking to you, on a burning bush or this, I will speak to you between the cherubims. Wow. Are you catching what I'm saying here? Yes. And you notice that the, the Ark of the Covenant was actually honored and respected. Not everyone could touch it. Mm -hmm. When people saw the Ark of, of the Covenant, they, 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 they honored God. Yeah. They honored God for the Ark. They actually, whenever they had the ark, they won wars. Yes. So they looked up to the ark. But who told them to make the images? God. Uh, are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. We hear you. Yes. Wow. Yes. We hear you. Is, it, is everybody listening to me? Yes. So who is telling them to make that? God. God is saying, no, 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 do it like this. And between the cherubims is where I'll be speaking. Mm -hmm. And whoever touched the ark and he was not a Levite or a priest, they died. Mm -hmm. So the presence of God was on the ark, especially between the cherubims. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Are you catching what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Go to the book of Numbers. I'm going to show you one more thing and then I will break down what I'm trying to say. Amen. I want you to go to Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. You're going to read this one, Heather. Okay. Mm -hmm. Numbers 13, verse 33. Mm-hmm. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. And there we saw the giants. Oh, actually, stop. No, don't go there. Go to Numbers 6, chapter 21. Numbers 21, verse 6 to 9. Numbers 29, 21, verse 6 to 9. Okay. Numbers 21, 6 to 9. Amen. Uh huh. Numbers 21, verse 6 to 9. Uh huh. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. The Lord sent serpents among the people. And they bit the people. And they bit the people. And much people of Israel died. And a lot of people died. Uh huh. And therefore the people came to Moses uh -huh. and said, We have sinned. Yes. For we have spoken against the Lord. Uh huh. And against thee. Uh huh. Pray unto the Lord uh -huh. that he take away the serpents from us. Uh huh. And Moses prayed for the people. Uh huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Make thee a fiery serpent. Ah, ah, wait, wait, wait. God, you don't like idols. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> My God. The children of Israel have sinned against God. God sent snakes to bite them. They say, Moses, we have sinned against God. We repent. Moses prays. God says, God doesn't say, Okay, I will send my spirit and deliver them. God tells Moses, Moses, I want you to make a bronze fiery serpent. <laughs> Lift it up. Whoever will look at it will Come be saved. On. Not whoever will pray to me. Come on. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. That's too much. <laughs> yeah. Too deep. Mm. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. I'm just trying to undo your mind so that I can tell you what a real idol is. What is Genesis chapter 20 verse 4 and 5 are really saying? Exodus 20 verse 4 to 5 is really saying. If you came for a healing service and Prophet Lovi says, puts up a snake, he says, look up to it. You say, ah, we knew this African prophet, devil worshiper, satanist. But God is telling them, he's telling Moses, make this bronze fiery serpent, lift it. Whoever will look at it will be saved, not whoever will look to me. You're teaching. Uh. I'm sorry, religious people, their brains will explode, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm trying to help you yes. understand something here. Amen. So just by these few verses, I could keep going. If you go, went to the temple of the Lord, the temple of Solomon, mm -hmm. God told Solo, uh, 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 Solomon... Uh, how to, he, he told him the height of the cherubims mm -hmm. to put in the before the holies of holies, their height, what rubies to put in. God is telling him to put images mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into the temple. Yes. If you go to church, you see a picture of an angel who say, Ah, these people, <laughs> God says you should not have any. Calm down. <laughs> I'm trying to undo your mind so that you can understand what an idol really is Amen. to God. Amen. Thank you. So you're seeing God telling people to put images. When Jacob went to his father-in-law and his father-in-law was trying to cheat, cheat him with the sheep and whatever, what did the angel of the Lord tell him? You're going to make an image with dots that your sheep will be looking at and then they were going to... So God is not against images. But what is God really against and what is a real idol? Yes. Amen. That is the biggest issue that God has. Because now you are noticing, now you are noticing by what we read is telling you that Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 to 5 is talking about a completely different thing. Go back to Exodus 20, verse 4 to 5. Let me now explain to you. Because this is where your deliverance is now. Amen. 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 Exodus 20, verse 4. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Stop right there. The condition is, you will not make unto yourself, mm. not if I tell you to. Ah. Uh, are, are you following? Are you following now what is happening here? Yes. Is, somebody, is somebody listening to yes. me? Yes. God is saying you will not make for yourself. Amen. Any 
graven images. Why? Me, your God, I am jealous. That's what God is saying. Verse 5 is saying, because I am a jealous God, I will punish up to three generations or four generations. What is God punishing and what is God hating? Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. We're about to get somewhere. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Uh -huh. And God said, let us make man in our image. Stop right there. <laughs> the problem with God is that when he was creating somebody called a human being, God already put his image on earth. God's problem is that you who is his image, you are looking up to other images instead of God who is you. The picture of God is already there. But now you have created things that are bigger and better than you. And to God that is offensive. Wow. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Yes, yes. God put his image. Yes. He put his likeness. <laughs> but you want to create a goat and bow to a goat. Yet a goat is not God's image. You are. Wow. That is offensive to God now. Is somebody understanding this now? Yes. Is this making sense? Yes. Uh, are you yes. sure you're here or should yes. you? Okay, let's stop. I'm just starting. We're about to go somewhere. Yes. What destroys your relationship with God is that you have a false identity and a false image that prevents you from seeing God. Wow. Some of you, you have made a financial issue bigger than you. Meaning that it is bigger than God. Now it's an idol. <laughs> if you look like God, if you look like God, if you have the abilities of God, you are created with the attributes of God. A situation happens, that situation begins to control you, that you begin to serve that idea, you begin to serve that situation. That it makes you and pulls you away from God. It means that you have created for yourself another image. Wow. wow. I, I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. You are not talking to yourself. Yes. I, I wish somebody could hear me. I wish more people would share this and more people would have thumbs up and things like that. So, good, wow. Papa. so the issue of God is he doesn't want you to create your own parcel. Wow. It means that God has already given you an image. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is a graven image? A solidified image. Wow. The image of your life, of your future, yeah. wow. of where you're going, wow. what will happen yeah. to you, how we will be with you. Anything that you lift above this, you have become an idol worshiper. Wow. Wow. I, I wish somebody is following me. Am I, am I making sense to you? Really good, Papa. Are, are you sure I'm making sense? Yes, you are making sense. So the issue is. You need to understand that every image you have ever created mm -hmm. or you think you are creating for yourself is because it's coming not from you. It is coming from somewhere else. Wow. Wow. Go back to Exodus 20 verse 4. Amen. I'm going to show you now. I told you to remember them. Now you're going to understand. Exodus 20 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image uh -huh. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Now, how are you going to make yourself an image of anything that is in the heavenly places, yet you have never been there? It means there is a spirit that is influencing you to create something that is in heavenly places. Wow. Come on. Wow. 
Is this making sense? Yes. There are three locations that God is saying, heaven above, go again. Heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath. That is in the earth beneath. So how do you know what is in the earth beneath? You've never gone there. Mm. Wow. 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 Or what? Underwear? Or that is in the water under the earth. Or that is in the water under the earth. Have you ever been there? It means there are spirits that influence people from these three dimensions to divert you from God. Wow. Come on, say it again. Jesus. That is why the Bible says police every thought that comes to you because it is not you. Have you ever been in a situation where yes. thoughts come to you that you are not thinking? Yes. There is a spirit talking to you. Yes. Mm. Jesus. Yes. My God. Ah, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Yes. So good. So good. It means there's somebody talking to you. You are just thinking that it is you, but it's not. Mm. Wow. Jesus. Because God also makes people think. The Bible says clearly, it is he that makes you to will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are times that you want things, but it is not you. It is God that makes you want things. God can make you want to go see somebody, and you go see them, then you understand the purpose of God. So yeah. God can do the same thing. Yeah. God can put thoughts into you. Amen. 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 Yes, he wow. Can. That's why God wants us to have the mind of God, yeah. the mind of Christ, the yeah. consciousness of Christ. It's because God can influence you through thoughts also. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Amen. Is Amen. it the only way God speaks? No. Come on, Papa. This is good. So good. <laughs> Let me show you an example. I was on Instagram live today early when I was going to the gym and unfortunately I was answering people's questions and my phone died when I was at the gym. I asked people this simple question. My son, uh, the Apostle Prophet Mike, can, can elaborate on this. <laughs> I, he just hit me, elaborate. <laughs> but watch this. Watch this. When you have thoughts, Mm -hmm. that are evil, wicked, Mm -hmm. that you did not think them, you know the devil is talking to you. Mm -hmm. You start, I rebuke, I cover my mind in the blood of Jesus. You start praying, you start saying, I cancel it, I reject those thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because that is outside of you, you recognize that it's outside of you. Wow, that's good, that's really good. But when thoughts come to you that are similar to yours, you say, I don't know if it is God or it's me making it up. It's because you don't understand that God will come to you only in the image of God that he put on earth. So God will sound like you. But because you don't know that you are made in his image, you will think God will sound like lightning and thundering. So you are thinking God will be outside of who you are Because you have a false image of God. So every time God is approaching you, you have already created an an idol that God will sound, I am Jehovah. That's a false image. The Bible says that God is a gentle God. He's gentle. He's meek. Meaning in the way he will come, he will come with simplicity. When Elijah was in the cave, the Bible says an earthquake came. But God was not in the earthquake. A fire came. God was not in the fire. A wind came. God was not in the... But a still small voice, meaning Elijah started hearing his own voice. He recognized that it was God. He took himself outside. He said, here I am, Lord. He said, Elijah, what are you doing here? When Samuel is sleeping, God calls him. Samuel thinks that it is his spiritual father, Eli, calling him. Why? Because the image of God on the earth will always be likened to a man. Let nobody deceive you. This is the reason the word became flesh. The word did not become an angel. Why? Because an angel is not the image of God on earth. So for God to show you how close he is to you, how he can relate to you, how you can behold him, how you can walk with him, how he can understand you, how you can understand him, he came like one of you. But when he came like one of us, 
we looked at him and we could not receive him because our idea of God was that he cannot be in a manger. Our idea of God is he cannot be so young. Our idea of God is he cannot be like this. If he can be touched, then he is not God. You have a false image of Jesus. That is why Jesus is far from you. Wow. wow. I feel like I'm talking to myself. No, Papa. No. Thank you, Jesus. I wish more people would share and let somebody know that will let somebody know that will let somebody know. Daniel chapter, John, Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. Daniel 3, 15. Amen. Uh, is somebody understanding this? Yes. This is good. The reason why Muslims cannot believe Jesus is God is because he's so much like them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the reason why Hindus cannot believe in Jesus is because he looks like them. Anything that looks like them, they despise. They want a golden calf, a golden cow, a gold, something that is more eli- complicated, complex. Yet the p- image of God is already on earth. So God expected that if he comes as a human being, it will be easy to recognize him. But because men have idols, they could not recognize him. So they rejected God because they thought God would come as a golden statue, something crazy. But God never came like that. He came like one of them. People think it was God being humble. No, God came in the image that he formed man. In Genesis chapter 1, in in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it says, God said, let us make man in our image. It means the image of man already existed. That is why Jesus is called the son of man. The son of man does not mean son of a human being. It means a divine being. The image of a divine being. It means divine one. The son of man. Why not the son of a woman? The son of man. It's a divine term. Wow. 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 Jesus. Hold where you are. Don't don't lose it. Genesis chapter 6. Begin from verse 4. Amen. Genesis. Do you realize Jesus is in heaven with flesh, not spirit? That's it. Come on. Do you realize angels eat? Yes. You, you are thinking of them as these ghostly beings. Jesus resurrects, sits down and eats pepper soup, soup uh, fish with, with his disciples and then goes to heaven. Yeah. He's eating. Yeah. So it means that flesh can exist in heaven. Wow. Wow. You people are not getting it. You're not catching it. Are you getting what I'm saying? People think when the Bible is saying fleshly nature is talking about a carnal mind. You have downgraded what is divine to something natural. That is what it means to be fleshly. Mm -hmm. This body is so spiritual. This flesh you see is super spiritual. That is why even though one day, if the rapture doesn't happen, we get buried, our spirits will be in heaven. But for us to really be truly live in heaven, what will God do? When Jesus comes, the, 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 the angel will, will sound the trumpet. What is the first thing that will happen? The physical body will come back together. It means it cannot be destroyed. It means this body is divine. Amen. It just became corrupted. So God is resetting it and recreating it. Wow. Notice he's not even bringing a new body. The same body will come back together, but it will be incorruptible this time. The same body. Meaning if you didn't lose weight, you will be the same weight. <laughs> I'm joking. That's a joke. I wish more people would share this and YouTube will have more thumbs up. I don't know if people are following me. If you are there, just type, I am here, prophet. I am here, prophet. I am here, prophet. I am here, prophet. 
Uh, is this helping somebody? Yes. 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 Have you ever looked up to a horse? You like horses, but you're not going to look up to a horse. Why? Because a horse cannot do what you do. Yeah. <laughs> but you can look up to a man or a woman that has achieved much and it can motivate you to get there. Why? Because they are just like you. They have everything you have. Mm -hmm. They are not unique. So you know if I apply myself, I will become just that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you're never going to look up to a monkey how it's climbing trees and say, one day. <laughs> <laughs> Is this making sense? <laughs> so you are influenced by images all the time. So God is not against you looking up to a man or a woman. Because that's the image of God. What else are you going to look up to? So when Paul is saying, follow me as I follow Jesus, it is actually what God wants. Yes. You, you want to follow a God that you cannot see. Impossible. He already gave you an image that you can look, observe, adapt, see the nature of God and follow. Amen. That's amazing. That's awesome. You are looking for angels with a harp. It, it, there's nothing like that, people. Calm down. <laughs> I'm not saying there are no harps in heaven, but it's not what you're thinking. Yeah. Are you, are you where, where in Genesis chapter 6? Verse 4. Verse 4. What does it say? There were giants in the earth in those days, mm -hmm. and also after that, Yes. when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, mm -hmm. and they bare children to them, mm -hmm. the same became mighty men which were of old, mm -hmm. men of renown. Uh -huh. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, Yes. and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Uh -huh. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Mm -hmm. And it grieved him at his heart. Uh -huh. And the Lord said. What did God say? I will destroy man whom I have created uh -huh. from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Both man and beast mm -hmm. and the creeping thing mm -hmm. and the fowls of the air. Mm -hmm. For it repenteth me that I have made them. Mm -hmm. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Aha. Are you listening to that? I want you to go to verse 2. The same chapter. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Yes. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that mm -hmm. they were fair. Mm -hmm. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Mm -hmm. That actually means they raped them. They mm -hmm. took wives. You don't take a wife. Yeah. Uh -huh. Keep going. And the Lord said... Uh -huh. listen, to, listen to what God said. Listen carefully. L what did God say? My spirit shall not always strive with man, mm -hmm. for that he also is flesh. For he also is flesh. So who is uh, the other flesh? Jeez. Himself. Yeah. If I say you are also black, it means I'm what? I'm black too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people didn't get that revelation, right? If I say, wow, you're also Armenian. Either I am Armenian or I know somebody that is Armenian. Right. So God is saying, my spirit will not strive with men no longer for he is also flesh. Mm. Wow. What is God trying to tell you? He's flesh. How did angels have sperm to conceive with human beings? Mm. It means they had flesh. Yeah. The Bible tells you that they are earthly bodies and celestial bodies. I wish somebody is listening to me. Listening. Are you in the Daniel? Yes. Go. <laughs> Daniel 3, 15. Uh -huh. Now if ye be ready, that mm -hmm. at what time ye hear the mm -hmm. sound of the cornet, mm -hmm. flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, yes. And dulcimer, yes, and all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. Ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Mm -hmm. Well, but if ye worship not, mm -hmm. ye shall be cast the same hour mm -hmm. into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Uh -huh. And who is the God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Uh huh. Keep reading. Verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Mesh, 
Meshach. Uh, Meshach. And Abednego. And Abednego. Oh, Abednego. <laughs> Keep going. It's all the same. Keep going. Answered and said to the king. Uh, they answered and said to the king. O Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. From the burning fiery furnace. Yes. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O he, king. He will deliver us from your hands. Keep reading. Uh, verse 18. Mm -hmm. But if not, be it known unto thee, mm -hmm. O king, mm -hmm. that we will not serve thy gods. We will nor not serve worship. thy gods. Notice he made one image, but they're saying we will not serve thy gods. Mm -hmm. Plural. Mm -hmm. Why were they saying this? They knew where that image idea came from. It was the magicians and all these corrupt people that told the king, create an image and be exalted as a god. So they knew. They knew. This is not coming from heaven. This is demonic. Wow. Are you getting what I'm saying? Keep reading. So they knew there were gods behind it. Keep reading. Nor worship the golden image mm -hmm. which thou hast set up. Your gods and the golden image that you have set up. So he's saying that your spirits made you make this golden image. Keep going. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, uh -huh. and the form of his visage mm -hmm. was changed mm -hmm. against Shadrach, Mesh mm -hmm. Meshach, Meshach uh -huh. and Evan Negro. Negro. Uh -huh. Okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore he spake mm -hmm. and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more mm -hmm. than it was wont to be heated. Uh -huh. Verse 20. Uh -huh. And he commanded the most mighty men that uh -huh. were in his army to uh -huh. bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Ebed Negro uh -huh. and to cast them uh -huh. into the burning fiery uh -huh. furnace. Uh -huh. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. Then these men were bound in their coats, uh -huh. their hosen, uh -huh. and their hats, uh -huh. and their other garments, uh -huh. and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery So furnace. they grabbed them, they sent mighty men, they heat up the furnace harder, they took the mighty men, the mighty men took these three Hebrew boys, threw them in the fire. Uh -huh. Then what happened? Uh, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent yes. and the furnace exceeding hot, uh -huh. the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So all those people that grabbed Shadrach, Meshach, mm -hmm. and Abednego, uh -huh. throwing them into the fire, they all died because the furnace was too hot. Yeah. Anyone who has an image a false image of God, whenever the pressure comes, they will perish. Wow. They will perish. They can't survive. Wow. 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 They will not survive. Yes. They will be destroyed. Period. This is why you have to understand trouble will always come. But those who know they are God, they can never be destroyed. Amen. It will be just an opportunity to display God. Yes. Amen. Keep going. Watch this. Verse 23. Uh -huh. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm -hmm. fell down, mm -hmm. bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Uh -huh. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. And he was at, uh, immediately they threw them in, he was astonished. What happened? And rose up in haste and uh -huh. spake uh -huh. and said unto his counselors, uh -huh. Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Uh -huh. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Uh -huh. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. No, no, no. I don't see. I, I see four men. <laughs> not three human beings and a mighty man. Wow. Not three human beings with a mighty angel. Yeah. Not three human beings with a giant. I'm just seeing another man that looks like them. Yeah. But the difference with this fourth guy, he looks like he may be God. Wow. Not because he was shining. Yeah. He just understood the presence of this fourth man made the fire not have power over these people. But their God looked exactly like them. Wow. The Bible doesn't mention he was taller, he was stronger, 
He had more muscles. There was nothing like, there was just a fourth man in there. Four men. Not three men and God. Four men. God came as one of them. That the king began to recognize that no, 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 no. Your God looks just like you. No, 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 no. You guys are not normal. Mm -hmm. Are you getting the effect that God is looking for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God wants people to see you and to see him. Amen. 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 God wants people to ask. He wants the world to associate his image to be synonymous with you. Amen. When they see Mike, they have seen Jesus. Amen. When they see Elin, they have seen Jesus. Amen. When they see Cheryl, they have seen Jesus. Amen. When they see church, they have seen Jesus. Amen. But you want them to see this mighty wind. No, no, no. That will never glorify God. It will push people's eyes onto something else. You did not get what I just told you. It will shift your sight. It will shift his sight to something else. Yet God is your father. How is he supposed to look? In a few years, my son will be the same height with me. Yes, yes. In a few years, he may be even taller than me. Right. When we stand together, okay, I'm, they will say, yeah, yeah, that looks like the dad. Why? Because I may look older yeah. or more mature. Mm -hmm. That will be the difference, but he will be my height or taller. That doesn't change I'm his father. Yes. You are expecting God to look like a giant so that you can say, that is my God. Yet that is not humility. Yeah. The thing that should bring humility in a believer yeah. is to realize that God who is great, who is mighty, made himself and copied himself and made you in his image. That should humble you. That every time you see your brother, your sister, you will respect God to say that I am seeing God. Yeah. It should put humility in you to say, how could a mighty God for me to look just like him. That should humble you. You want to be humble by seeing a mighty God. That is not humility. That is fear. That is tyranny. God is not looking for you to be impressed by lightning in order for you to... No. God wants you to see him. Yes, yes. For that is what makes God powerful. You have empowered the devil by, by giving him horns, yet you don't understand what horns mean in the spirit. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh. Mm. Horns represent authority and power. The Bible tells you the Lamb of God has seven horns. Fullness of, of power, fullness of authority. But you have drawn the devil with these big horns. He's scary, he's powerful. Yet this is a creature that is beneath you. Yeah. He's a snake. God yeah. gave you the image of the yeah. devil. He's a snake that eats dust. Amen. But you have glorified him and built an image bigger. So you cannot defeat the devil. Wow. Because your image of him wow. is already different. Wow. So when the devil comes to you, you are looking for this big giant. Yet it's a snake you could just stomp and end it. But because you have the wrong image, you are fighting the wrong battle. Wow. You are looking for the wrong battle. But you don't understand that you are fighting. That's why the Bible tells you, listen... You're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Understand the image of what you're looking for. Yes. yes. Oh, this is so great. You, you are creating the, the devil is this evil, big horns. Yes, he's wicked, but he's nothing to you. God already gave you his image. He's a snake. That be, uh, the Bible literally says, your food will be dust. What does that mean? The devil will always see your acceleration. You know when you're accelerating, what do you leave behind? Dust. So he will always be somebody that is following your crumbs. He will always be somebody that is beneath you. But you have given him a different image that God never gave him. And then you are wondering why you cannot win. It's because you have positioned him bigger than you. And that has become your reality. Amen. Wow. That's good. You have given the devil two horns. Okay, Jesus has seven. Yeah. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so if it is the horns battle, Jesus has better. <laughs> I don't know if somebody's getting it. If it's going to be the battle of the horns, okay, Jesus has more. Wow. That's good. 
That's real good. Just, that's very tight. Just, 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 Jesus. Just soak it in. So if we're going to play the horns fight, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> So what is removing idols from your life? Mm, help us. Is comprehending the identity of who you really look like. Yes. You think your identity is in the cross. No. Your identity has been from the beginning. That is why Jesus is called the second Adam. Mm. That image already existed. Yes. Jesus has been. He is God. He has been. So your image is not, your identity is not in the victory. No. Victory is obvious because you look like God. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Victory is obvious because you look like God. God literally created man to do the things he does on the planet earth. So just the fact that you are a human being, you're already better than the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I wish more people would share this and bless somebody with. This is so good. So good. Yeah. Amen. So this is something that you need to really comprehend. You people think that an idol is what you obsess over. <laughs> Yet the biggest idol. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that small thing that you obsess over. Can it become an idol? Yeah, TV could be. Right. Wow. But it's not really the idol that God is really angry at. Oh, yeah. this is helping us. Wow. That's so good. It's much deeper than that. My God. The TV is a result of something deeper. Wow. My God. Wow. That's so good. The reason why you don't honor men and women of God is because you don't know the image of God. You are not recognizing what God is doing. The earth will bow down when they will see Jesus coming on a cloud. Mm -hmm. Because that's the image they want to see. Yeah. They expect him to be. Mm -hmm. But they won't see anything different from what he came. He will look the same way, but he will come in a cloud. He will display himself. Now people will bow down because they are afraid. Mm -hmm. But we bow down when he showed himself in simplicity. We saw him in simplicity and we believed. Mm -hmm. Yes. So seeing him with a cloud, even if you humble yourself, it's fake humility. Mm -hmm. You are seeing him as God displaying him more, himself more. Mm -hmm. are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, yes I do. Yes. <laughs> so good. So good. That is why Jesus told his disciples. If anyone tells you the kingdom of God is over there, it's over here, don't believe them. It is within you. He's not saying that the kingdom of heaven is inside of you. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that nature of God you are looking for mm -hmm. is inside of you. Yes. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But the problem is you have not brought him out. You have kept that kingdom, that God within you ex instead of displaying him externally. Why is God listening when you say, oh Lord, God of my father, prophet Lovi, and God answers you? Why is God answering you? Yeah. Why is it that when you pray, oh Lord, the God of Moses, yes. why is God answering you? Why is God answering to Moses' name? What? Is God's name Moses? No. But Moses is an access point because Moses was a display of God himself on earth. Yes. Yes. Wow. Oh, some people don't understand this. I wish somebody would say fire. Fire! Hmm. I wish somebody would shout fire. This is too much. Fire. Oh, Lord Jesus. oh Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you're just so good. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I want you to go to Exodus chapter 4. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me one second. I want to show you something. Okay, actually, go to, yeah, chapter 4. And I want you to read from verse, verse 12, Exodus chapter 4, verse 12. Verse 12 to 16. Amen. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Verse 12 to 16. Amen. You ready? Mm -hmm. Go for it. Listen to this. I'm just about to mess up all your theology with this one and we are done. Read. <laughs> Exodus 4 verse 12 uh -huh. to 16. Mm -hmm. Now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth. God is saying to Moses, go and I will be with your mouth. And teach thee what thou shalt say. Mm-hmm. And he said, O my Lord, mm -hmm. send, mm -hmm. I pray thee, mm -hmm. by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. Mm -hmm. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against God. God was angry against Moses. God is telling Moses, Moses, go and tell people this and I will be with your mouth. I will tell you what to say. And Moses said, Lord, I'm not going because I don't know how to speak very well. Moses had a stammering problem. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, God, I'm not going to go. Mm -hmm. And God got angry. Mm -hmm. The anger of the Lord rose against Moses. Keep going. And he said, and is, uh -huh, keep going. is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? God now is saying, is Aaron not your brother? Uh -huh. I know that he can speak well. God said, I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, uh -huh. he cometh forth to meet thee. He said, in fact, he's on his way to meet you. So he had already, God had already pulled him from Egypt to go and meet Moses. Uh -huh. And when he seeth thee, uh -huh. He will be glad in his heart. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt speak unto him mm -hmm. and put words in his mouth. Mm -hmm. And I will be with thy mouth mm -hmm. and with his mouth mm -hmm. and will teach you what ye shall, say, shall do. Mm -hmm. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. Mm -hmm. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. Uh -uh. Is it small g, big g? A big G. Please read that last verse again. I want you to hear what God is saying. And he shall be thy spokesman. Aaron will be your spokesman. And the word spokesman there is prophet. He will be one that speaks for you. But you will be God to him. Not a small G. Big G. You will be God to him. Is it a small G? It's a big, 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 what is it? What is it? It's a big G. It's a big G. Why? It's because there are, hu there are human beings walking around you. You don't understand that God has made them God on earth. What does that mean? They are a fullness that represents Jesus on earth. They are men of God that are simply spokesmen. They can preach about God, speak about... But when God approves a man that he begins to do strange things... You have to, <laughs> let me stop. Some people are not understanding what I'm saying. But I hope that the mature ones will understand what I just said. <laughs> Somebody shout fire. Fire! <laughs> and God says there is nothing new at under this side. Uh, it's a cycle. <laughs> Elisha used to travel by a certain road with his servant all the time. And a woman used to lodge them, give them a place to stay. And that woman actually built a, a small quarters for Elisha when he traveled. And this woman perceived that he was a man of God. Mm -hmm. And Elisha, when he would stay there, one day he said, he called his servant, he said, 
I want you to go and ask the woman, what does she want me to do for her? What do you want me to do for you? Do you want me to tell the king about you, speak to the king? What is it that you desire? His servant said, uh, um, my lord, she wants a baby. They don't have a child. He said, oh, that's easy. I will give her a baby. Are you God? Yeah. <laughs> He's deciding already, okay, I will give her a baby. Are you understanding what is happening here? A man is deciding, she's, no, her needs is she wants a baby. He said, no problem, I will give her a baby. Yes. Not I will pray and intercede for you to her. He said, no, no, it's okay, I will give her a baby. <laughs> what you don't realize is the word man of God in the scripture actually means God man. That's what it, the true Hebrew meaning is, God man, not man of God. Yes. Because man cannot be of God. Joseph is in Egypt. The king has a dream. He goes to the king and the king said, I have a dream and I don't know what it means. Joseph said, don't all dreams come from God? Tell me your dream. <laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> don't all dreams come from God? Now tell me your dream and I'll tell you what it means. Amen. What are you saying <laughs> without saying? Right. That is why the Pharaoh said, I recognize that the spirits of the gods are in you. Because he's a pagan man, he doesn't understand. He just knew this man, he's f inside of him, is their God, is inside of this man. Because there is no way he would have that wisdom and that understanding. I, I want you to capture this. I want, you to, I want you to capture this. There are men who are representing God in a dangerous way. You just don't know. Because you expect God to look different. Mm -hmm. are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Everybody in the book of Acts is selling things and people are sharing things. Ananias and Sapphira come. Oh, we sold our field also here. Peter asked them, ah, are you sure you sold it for that much? They say, yeah, absolutely said, why did you allow the devil to enter you? Yeah. You thought you were lying to me, but you're lying to the, to the Holy Spirit. First of all, God cannot be deceived. So how is it possible to lie to the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. He did not say you are attempting. Mm -hmm. He said, you thought you were lying to me, but you are lying to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Peter, are you the Holy Spirit that you can be lied to? Mm -hmm. Are you understanding the verbiage here? Yeah. The wording itself tells you something is off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody can deceive God. Nobody can lie to God. But you notice the way Peter is speaking, if you go to Genesis chapter 3, God is speaking the same way. Adam, where are you? Oh, we hid because we were afraid. Did you hide because you did what I told you not to do? Are you seeing the character, the same character? Yes. Did you really sell the land for that much? Mm. Wow. <laughs> are you seeing the same spirit speaking? Yes. With the same kind of patience. <laughs> Adam, where are you? Oh, I'm hiding. <laughs> Adam, why are you hiding? Did you do what I told you not to do? Then Adam said, it's the woman you get. Notice, God will always give you an opportunity to speak. Not because he doesn't know, but because he likes to speak like he's one of you. He likes to speak like he's one of us. So he will never come, I know all that you have done. When you are in the wrong. Why? Because God doesn't want you to have pressure. He wants you to communicate with him. He's your father. Amen. Adam, where are you? As if he has not been watching from heaven. <laughs> Adam, where are you? As if there are no angels in the garden. Adam, where are you? As if he's not omnipresent. How did he know where he was so that he was... Wa Imagine I'm coming to where your bedroom is mm -hmm. and saying, Elin, are you there? But coming to where you are, pretending I don't know where you are. 
Are, are you capturing this, this thought? It's not like God was on the other end of the garden. God is actually going to where he is. He's like, Adam, where are you? I am hiding. Why are you hiding? I'm standing where you are. You are behind that bush. I'm saying, Adam, where are you? <laughs> I'm hiding because I'm like, why are you hiding? Did you do what I told you not to do? Of course he's God. He knows what happened. Yeah, he knows. Did we go offline? What happened? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, the battery on that thing died. Change it. But I'm sure they can hear us. It's back. Okay. But I know they can hear us, right? Okay, good. Good. Can you guys hear me? Are we back? Hallelujah. So, so capture this, everyone. Are we back on? Everybody can see me? Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. <sighs> so understand this and understand this by the Spirit of God. That is why Elisha always ran to Elijah and said, my Lord, Mm -hmm. called him my Lord. Why? Mm -hmm. Why did the sons of the prophets bow themselves to Elijah? Mm -hmm. Why were these things happening? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Abraham is sitting outside of his tent. He sees three men, not three angels. With, a, with God among them. There was nothing sophisticated about anything. Mm-hmm. They looked like three travelers, but he recognized God. You don't recognize God because you have the wrong image of God. Mm-hmm. If Abraham is seeing three men and he can recognize God, he ran and bowed himself and said, my Lord. Mm-hmm. Not my Lord's, my Lord. Mm-hmm. If it pleases you, please come into your servant's house. Come and eat a little bit. Come and sit down. God is coming from heaven. Jesus is coming on earth with two angels. And they can enter into Abraham's house and eat barbecue. Mm -hmm. God is eating on earth. Eating and then after he was satisfied, say, okay... Uh, Sarah will have a child. I came down to see Sodom and Gomorrah. God did not come with a mighty crown shining. Just regular. Some of you, you've had dreams. Mm Prophet Lovey appeared to you, or maybe you saw Benny Hinn and he was ministering to you. You woke up, you say, wow. Ah, ah, ah. Wow. Ah, ah. I just saw Pastor Benny pouring oil on me. <laughs> is Pastor Benny going to be able to enter your dream? God is just using an image mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. to reach you. Yes. Yes. An image that is associated to him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Papa, I see you in my dreams all the time. You don't know God is visiting you, but because you have associated it to just a man, you don't understand that that man is simply a passport that God is using to visit people. Yes. 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 Let me tell you the truth. Some of you, the day you will see Jesus, you will recognize that you have the wrong picture of Jesus. I'm telling you now. And I have seen him. I had a, I had a, a, I won't go into too much detail, but this will be in my book, Spiritual Encount- Lessons from Spiritual Encounters. Amen. I was stood before God. I stood before God and I saw three men. Remember when I was telling you, three men looked exactly the way you think a human being looks. Three men. But I knew I was standing before the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everything in me was shaking. But they looked like three men. And they spoke to me. With one voice. 
with one thought, with one mind, when one moved, all of them moved. Wow. When one spoke, all of them spoke. Wow. Mm. They were distinct yet the same person. Mm. Listen, you're not listening to somebody who is telling you about a God he doesn't know. I have seen him mm. many times. Mm. By his sovereign grace, why he wanted to do that with me, I don't know. I will never know. He just chose to do it. So I am not telling you of something that I don't know of. I'm telling you exactly what I know. Thank you, Lord. Even when angels appeared in the Bible, go to the book of Daniel, go to, in the realm of men, what did they appear like? Men. When the mother of Samson saw the angel of the Lord, she said, a man of God spoke to me, not an angel. She could not even tell if it was an angel. He, she, she said, a man of God spoke to me. And her husband even prayed, Father, let the man of God that spoke to my wife, let him come back again. Mm-hmm. And the next day he showed up like a regular traveler and he spoke to them the oracles of God. The man said, what is your name so that we may honor you? We can, he said, no, 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 no. Just build an altar, give something to God. They stood and put a sacrifice on the altar. Immediately they saw the man changed and he was taken up in the, in the offering as it went to heaven. They fell down to their face. They said, we will surely die because we have seen God. This was an angel. But when he changed, they said, we have seen God. Why? Because he looked like a man. <laughs> Some of you didn't get it. It is the highest privilege to look like God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. They fell down. They said, we, are, we will surely die for we have seen God. When, when, when Joshua was about to go to the battle of Jericho, he saw a, ma- a man standing with a sword drawn. And the man told him, hey, take off your shoes from off your feet. You're standing on holy ground. He said he saw the man. In fact, the man didn't even invite him. He saw the man. And he went to him and asked him, are you for us or against us? He told him, I am neither. I am the commander of the armies of the Lord. He was in Joe Michael. He said, take off your shoes from off your feet. You're standing on holy ground. He bowed himself. Why? Because he recognized that I am standing in the presence of God. You have to remember the name Michael means one that resembles God. Mm -hmm. So if you saw Angel Michael, he wouldn't have big wings or he looks like you. (laughs) Your issue is you think the Bible does not say man is the only one made in the image of God. It says man was made in the image of God. Not the only one. (laughs) There are angels that are not made in the image of God, but the seven spirits are. When, Daniel appear, when Gabriel appeared to Daniel, he said, I saw the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in my dreams, not the angel. He looked like a man. You don't understand that it is the highest privilege to look like a man. Because man is the image of God. Wow. 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 But you look at yourself, you have the wrong image of yourself. I'm too fat, I'm too thin, I'm so this, I'm so that, I can't do this. I c- you are abusing God's image. That's, you, you, you are really messing up God's idol. God's image, you are destroying it. When you don't love yourself, why do you think the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself? People have contradicted this scripture. I've never seen probably one of the most simplest scripture, but the most contradicted. Charles, come. Come, my son, come. If this is the most valuable thing I have, and the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself, and I take this and I give it to him, I think I've done God right by God, Mm -hmm. but God looks at me as a hypocrite. Mm. Why? I should never give him something that has not benefited me first. Love your neighbor the way you love yourself. Wow. So what I should give you should be what I have given myself. Wow. I have proven it by loving myself as then I can give you because it's, it has served me right. Wow. So you have the wrong image of yourself. 
You think by doing things you become like God, not knowing that you should be acting like God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He kept his only begotten son for billions of years, then he gave him to the world. Mm. Wow. He showed that he loves the world because he gave what he loves. Mm. So if you sacrifice things that you have not benefited yourself first, you are a hypocrite. False idol. It's false humility. (laughs) False humility. God gives us his best because he benefited him first. Don't do things for people that you've never done for yourself. It's a sin. Love your neighbors, you love yourself. Means do it for yourself first, then do it for everybody else. As evidence that you love yourself. Wow. Some of you, you will go and bless people with gifts, but you've never gone and buy anything nice for yourself. Wow. When you have friends, you take them to nice restaurants. When was the last time you took, I mean, we know we are in a shutdown or something, but when did you ever just... Take yourself to the restaurant by yourself, a date with yourself, and sit down and just treat yourself. So when you take people to treat them, it is a practice that you already do for yourself. It's not anything new. When have you just dressed up for yourself? You just dress up, oh, I'm going out with people, so I'm going to look my best. Yet your best should be what you do for yourself. What people see is a result of what you already do. Because you recognize I carry the image of God. I need to carry myself a certain way. I need to look a certain way. Because I am representing God. So when people see me, is they should always see a version that I have already been working on. Not a version that I produce that is fake for that day. The next day if they see me, they don't even recognize if it's the same person. When you don't know how to love yourself, you don't know who God is. You have a wrong image. All this is because you have wrong idols. You have another persona you put on when you are with people. When you are with yourself, you have a different persona that is just whatever. But you are a child of God. Then you go and pray. God is looking at you. Mm. Take care of yourself. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead. Meaning Jesus the man was the house of God. What is the difference with him and you? Aren't you also the house of God? So So good. But because you have idols... You don't love yourself. You love a version of yourself. You know, you have to look so cute until cuteness just becomes who you are. That even when you think it is the day that you have not dressed up, everybody's like, man, I just love how you look like. How do you do it? You've loved yourself. It begins to radiate. It proves that you honor God by loving yourself. This is the image of God. Take care of it. You adorn all these idols, but you don't adorn the image of God. Oh, wow. (laughs) Listen, anybody who knows me, they know that I do things for myself. Oh, 100%. I'll go to the store, buy myself a nice suit. I'll go buy myself nice shoes. I will take myself on dates by myself. I do that all the time. All the time. I really do. What you see is what you see. It's just the way I am. I'm not a different person when I'm preaching. Yeah. I have accepted the image of God. Amen. 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 If you don't accept yourself, God cannot accept you. Before we pray, I'm going to tell you this. What prevents you from approaching God is because you have the false image of God. You have the closest access to God because you carry his very own image. 
But if you go before him with a distorted image of yourself, mm -hmm. it means you will have a distorted view of God. Wow. Jesus. Wow. Jesus. Oh my God. Hallelujah. 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 If you don't know how to love yourself, mm -hmm. you're abusing the temple of God. Mm -hmm. Fasting is good, but if you fast just all the time, it's bad. Mm -hmm. It's bad for your health. Yeah. It's beneficial, but if it's overly, it's bad. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to balance, to maintain the, the image of God, the body that God has given you. But if you're always just Listen, learn to enjoy what God has given you. Mm -hmm. Adorn Amen. yourself. Yes. You're already doing it spiritually. All those spiritual foods you've been eating, put it on display. Yeah. Amen. You know, I've heard people say this a lot. God don't like ugly. It's absolutely true. <laughs> there should always be the best version of you. The same way it is spiritually. should be also external. Some of you, you divorced Jim. <laughs> you don't work out and your health is falling apart. You just say, hey, God will use me. How can you use a broken vehicle? Uh, wow. Uh, Mike, my son, how long can I stand and preach? <laughs> Several hours. <laughs> <laughs> when, we were in the, when we were in the house, without all this live stream, when we could just meet. I could preach for seven, eight hours straight. Jesus. Pray for people after that also. Yeah. When you don't understand who you are, it's because you don't understand who God is. It is God's business when you don't take care of yourself. Amen. Get rid of false idols. Amen. If your finances are controlling you, if you are afraid of men, if you are intimidated by situation, then you don't know who you are. You are the express image of God. Things should be afraid of you. Amen. Your presence should change things. Yes. I want you to read this verse before we go. I'm going to read this to you and then we're going to worship God and we're going to pray. Amen. I'm going to pray that God will do something with your conscious and subconscious mind. Amen. Amen. I really am going to pray for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Numbers... 1333. Numbers 1333. And we are done. Numbers 1333. Amen. Numbers 13, verse 33. Yes. And there we saw the giants, uh -huh. the sons of Anak, uh -huh. which come of the giants. Uh -huh. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers. They looked at themselves. They said, we are too small. Uh -huh. And so we were in their sight. And then they imagined that also the sons of Anak looked at them as grasshoppers. But all this is what? In their mind. Yes. The Bible literally says the verse before, they went and brought an evil report. This was evil because they created something in their mind. That was not the reality. Mm -hmm. Number one, those giants were in their land. Mm -hmm. They were in their territory. Right. 
and they were with God and God was with them. God destroyed a whole nation that was more equipped than the sons of Anak. But they say, we look too small. How many of you have gone to auditions? How many of you have gone to apply for jobs? How many of you have tried to do business? But because there is a giant that has already done the business better than you, you say, you know, I don't know if it will ever be. Um, you know, we are just a startup. We are just small. Mm. Your language has already bound you that you'll ah. never be anything more. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Keep reading. Mm. Uh, in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Uh-huh. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Mm -hmm. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. Mm -hmm. And the whole congregation said unto them, Mm -hmm. Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, Mm -hmm. or would God we had died in this wilderness? Mm -hmm. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land Mm -hmm. to fall by the sword? Mm-hmm. That our wives and our children should be a prey. Notice they, they have created a whole imagination. Now they are complaining about, they are already saying we came to die. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. God delivered you from Egypt, yeah. parted the Red Sea, did yeah. all these things. But because you have a, it means that if God performs any kind of miraculous act, deliverance for you. If your mind is not renewed, you will always go back to the same place. Wow. Mm-hmm. It won't matter. Mm-hmm. Keep reading, watch this. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? They are even saying it is better if we were in Egypt, yet they are not slaves. They have not even fought. Mm. The God who parted the sea, they saw the Red Sea parted. God fed them in the wilderness. God defended them. They saw the cloud of God moving with them, where physically. They are saying we should have just, let's just go back to Egypt. We were better off there. We, we came here to die by the sword. You didn't die by any other person's sword. Why are you going to die here? False image. God has been trying to show them who he is. But they don't want to accept. Mm -hmm. Because they have a distorted mindset. Mm -hmm. They have a... You see, when you have remained in bondage for too long, Mm -hmm. even your mind Mm -hmm. doesn't see solutions. You just see bondage. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Look at this. And they said one to another, Uh let us make a captain. Mm-hmm. And let us return into Egypt. They are even saying, let us propose how we can go back to the devil. Man. Jeez. Wow. No. Keep reading. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Uh-huh. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of... Jif- Notice, Josh, even Moses was like, he began to cry, not because he was cry- He began to weep. He's like, what is wrong with these people? Yeah. Wow. Then listen to what Joshua and Caleb said. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, uh-huh. which were of them that searched the land. He, these two were among the people that went to spy on the land. Mm. So a whole group of people went together, but two people are giving a different report from everybody else that were complaining and murmuring. What did they say? Rent their clothes. Mm-hmm. They and tore their clothes, meaning they were, it was an abomination. How could you guys say this? They tore their clothes, huh? And they spoke unto all the company of the children of Israel. They spoke to everybody. What did they say? Saying, the land uh-huh. which we passed through to search it yes. is an exceeding good land. They went through it. They said, this land is so good. Yeah. The other ones saw giants. Then they saw a good land. Eesh, Keep yeah. reading. If the Lord delight in us, uh-huh. then he will bring us into this land and give it us. If God delights in us, of course he delights in you. That's why you are there. He will give you that land. Keep going. A land which floweth with milk and honey. This is the land that was promised to their fathers. And that promise brought them out of bondage of 400 and something years yeah. and brought them to this place. Yes. But they think that they are better off where they were bound for 400 years. Wow. Keep reading. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. He said, don't rebel against God. What is your problem? Neither fear ye the people of the land. Don't fear those people. For they are bred for us. They they were created for, they were bred, they were matured for us. Uh Their defense is departed from them. Their defense is already departed. It means God nurtured them and took their defenses away so that they can overcome. Keep reading. And the Lord is with us. And God is with us. Fear them not. Don't fear them. 
Uh huh. Keep going. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. You see, this is the problem with Christians. Mm -hmm. When you have a false image, when a prophet is sent to you to declare something, to tell you the mind of God, you start saying, ah, but the idol. Mm -hmm. They exalted the sons of Anak as if they are God. They made them bigger than the God that brought them from Egypt. Yeah. They, made him more, they made them more powerful than the God who parted the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. They have already died by their sword before they even fought. They don't even know if they have swords. And this was the land, this was where they were taken out of Egypt to go to. Mm. Too much. Yeah. Right. Wow. <laughs> Idols are what stop you from being bold enough to go after what God promised you. Wow. 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 Idols are the ones that are stopping you. Yeah, you're not listening to me. Yeah. Wow. Idols are the ones that are stopping you from becoming everything that God called you to be. My God. It's idols. Wow. You are blaming the devil. It's not the devil. You created an idol. My God. My God. You created an idol and you're not understanding why. <laughs> You created an idol. All things are possible to them that believe. If you know it is possible, you can do it. Not even if you pray. The Bible is not saying if you pray. It's saying all things are possible to them that believe. Jesus said, if you believe, you can tell this mountain to move. Not because you have the Holy Spirit. Just because you believe. Why? Because the nature of God is already naturally in you. These people in the world that are winning, they're not better than you. But because you have created an idol, you are bound. Wow. As a man thinketh, so is he. Not as a man prayeth. Your thoughts. Yes, yes, yes. I'll teach this in, in, um, in the next prophetic school. I will tell you why thoughts are very dangerous. And even the Bible tells you to control it. You see, thoughts are language in the spirit and thoughts empower wow. or can empower or strip down a spiritual being. Oh God. God empowered us by saying something, for I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. So we are becoming what God is thinking. Mm -hmm. So everything we have is because God thought it. Mm -hmm. So thoughts are substance spiritually. Mm. So when a devil is a small worm and you make him powerful, you have literally empowered him to become more than what he is. So the devil you are facing is not what God created, is what you empowered. Oh, wow. Wow. The extent of what God said that he will have the ability is to simply strike your heel but you crush his head. Meaning if he nibbles at your, knee, at your, at your heel, you can crush his head and you stop him. Yes. But you have made him to be able to destroy you, put you in the grave. Yet it was never like that. No. Amen. We have become everything that God thought. Mm -hmm. But you undo God's thoughts. By adding your own thoughts that exalt other things above everything that God has said. Do you realize this Bible benefits us, not God? Amen. The Bible says, you know, bring down everything that exalts itself above what? Let me see if you know the Bible. It says, cast down imagination. Bring down every thought that lifts itself above the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. So what is the knowledge of God? What God has revealed about you? Everything that exalts itself above that truth. Yeah. Bring it down. Amen. Yes, if you Papa. don't, you're empowering spirits that are fighting you. Oh, that's deep. Every knowledge that is in this Bible is for our sake, not for God. It benefits us. Amen. So the knowledge of God that we have is for us to be better. Amen. 
and to display God and to manifest God better. We are going to pray in a second. I want you to go and grab your sacrifice. You're going to go and give to God. And you're going to honor God and you're going to say, Lord, this message that I've received today, mm-hmm. this message that I've received today, Let it bring a lasting change in me. As I sacrifice before you, let it let there be a supernatural change. As I give to you, let everything that was in me in my mind, let it go into the sacrifice. And as you receive it by fire, let those things be consumed also. I want you to go do it right now and then we'll be back. If you're ready to pray, just type, I'm ready to pray. Hallelujah. Can I have my phone again? I want to bring up a verse that will be very helpful to people. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. I want us to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 5. Amen. Are you ready? Yes, yes please. Mm-hmm. Second Corinthians 10, 4 to 5. Yes. For the weapons of our warfare mm-hmm. are not carnal, yes. but mighty through God to mm-hmm. the pulling down of strongholds, mm-hmm. casting down imaginations and mm-hmm. every high thing that exalt it itself against the knowledge of God. So if it's an imagination, where is it? Okay, am I'm, I I'm talking to myself here? Where is it? It's in your mind. Read it one more time. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm-hmm. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So our weapons are not carnal. They are spiritual. Mm-hmm. They are mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds. So we have weapons, but they are through God. Amen. What does that mean? To pull down imagination, strongholds and imaginations that lifts itself above the knowledge of God. Mm-hmm. So it means our weapon is the knowledge of God concerning us that we have cast down, but we need to lift it back up Amen. above everything else. Mm-hmm. Is this making sense? Read it one more time. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, Uh but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, Uh casting down imaginations and Uh every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So it is, the weapon is actually the knowledge of God that arrests Everything that exalts itself above God. Capturing imaginations, bringing down imagination and thought. Because thoughts are formed by imagination and imagination forms thoughts. I don't know if you're ready to pray. (laughs) I want everybody that can online grab anointing oil. Grab anointing oil. Grab anointing oil. Amen. Give me this oil. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want if every one of you here. You're going to put some on your hands, rub it together, and you're going to put it on your mind. You're going to touch your forehead. 
you're going to touch your forehead. You're going to touch your forehead and just keep your hand there. Whether you're going to use the left hand or the right hand, it doesn't matter. One hand will go on your forehead, another one will go on top of your head. Quickly. Amen. Quickly, as fast as you can. Quickly, 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 quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I'm giving you time, those who are at home. Quickly. Remember, delayed ob obedience is disobedience. Just rest your hand, one hand on your forehead, another one on your top of your head. I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. Kilia mandala karudia avalakesa. Tobradia anamakuza malakia adebea. Ronemese vekedia arundia amakasote. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you ready? 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 I'm looking at the people online. Online, are we ready? Are you online, are we ready? We're about to make some prayers right now. If you're ready, are you ready? Okay, I'm seeing people are saying yes. Okay, let's pray now. This prayer, we are going to pray, is so that God Almighty, I wish you could hear me. Amen. Unplug it, yes. This prayer we are going to make will be so that God Almighty will touch your conscious and subconscious mind. If there is anyone who can reform and change our mind beyond even our own ability, it is God. There is a dimension that the word of God renews your mind. But the Lord Jesus said, may the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. The Spirit of God can touch your mind. He can touch your soul. And light can come in and reform and remove all those thoughts. All those things that Satan used to put you in bondage. And in a twinkle of an eye, everything about you can change. Your perspective can change. If God could touch Pharaoh and harden his heart, God can also touch you and lose your mind. Amen. As you lay your hands on your head, say this with me. Lord Jesus, I am yours. Everything about me is yours. Lord, I am your vessel. Through the, course of life, Through the course of life, I have allowed things to come into my mind. I have allowed, to come into I have allowed thoughts to control me that did not come from you, that, from you. that were not inspired by your word. By you. Some of these thoughts, some of these, thoughts, some of these imaginations, some of these are a result of the things I have gone through. That I failed to see your hand in them. Father, this day I pray. Touch my mind. Touch my mind. Go into my subconscious. Go into my conscious mind. Remove those things that I accumulated that are not doing me any good. 
in the name of your son Jesus let there be a transformation of my mind today every thought that I had concerning myself Every thought that brought hate to myself. Every thought that brought depression on me. Every thought that brought limitation to me. Every thought that produced failure in my life. In the name of Jesus, I scatter it. I uproot it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, begin to pray for your mind now. Open your mouth and talk to God. Begin to speak that God will remove those things. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. That pornography that has been controlling you. That depression that has been controlling you. That lust that has been controlling you. All those things that have brought... Them, command them to leave you now. Command them to be removed from your mind now. That thought pattern. Let it be removed in the name of Jesus. Rimando kora babaya tilibia amakuza. Lepronde parivia azovanka, limara kubara de debeato, ribanto, cobre dia asuvia mala kodaba ya katea, ribanka rakanta la kidia amazupa. In the name of Jesus, say now, Lord, I join my mind with your mind. I receive your thoughts concerning my life by your spirit. In the, name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus. The same way you spoke to the prophets of old. You inspired men that were not learned. You gave them thoughts and ideas. Even your voice. When they did not know any better. You led them. You spoke to them. By your voice. Even by your thoughts. Even by your imagination. You poured it into them. And they knew your oracles. They knew your mighty works. You revealed yourself unto them. Let it be the same for me today. Let it be the same for me today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Begin to declare that your mind will carry the light of God. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, pray, speak to God. Ask God's light to come into you. 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 In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father, let your enlightenment come into me. Father, let your knowledge come into me. Father, let your wisdom come into me. Let all those things that are godly be poured into me by your spirit. Give me the strength to cultivate that which is spiritual. Your word says, the light of the body is the mind. Today let light fill my body. As my mind has been renewed, let your light fill my body. 
in the name of Jesus. Everybody shout amen. amen. Now listen to me and listen to me clearly. Listen to me and listen to me clearly. Today there has been a change that God has given you. Thank you, Lord. Don't just hear the word of God. Become somebody that practices the word of God. Yes. What you have heard today did not come from me, but came from your Father in heaven. Amen. Let idols be removed from your life. Amen. 